Hi there guys, uh, my name's Graham. I'm going to be making a custom built four foot varium for a uh, Texas black king snake. Um, you can do it for other snakes as well, um, corn snakes especially if you're doing a uh, tank for a ball python or something like that or, or a boa then you're going to probably want to make um, the hides a bit bigger than I do in this video but this is essentially what we're going to be getting to in this video, just kind of uh, the main landscaping um, and we're doing this all on a very very tight budget um, I don't want to spend too much money on it and I want to show people how you can make an a awesome enclosure um, of varium for very, very, very cheap and build in a lot of the stuff yourself and um, it's going to be perfectly, perfectly safe for snakes and I'm very aware of like the chemicals involved um, and the glues and the materials and sealants and stuff like that. So we'll be going through all that. Uh, today this video is literally just um, the landscaping and the tank. Um, I'm going to be telling you exact how, exactly how much everything costs in these videos as well. The tank um, I got second hand off Gumtree. Um, I actually managed to find it for 15 quid. Uh, it wasn't ideal, I had some glass in the top, but we took that out. Um, and I'll show you how I did that. And um, the polystyrene, um, well, uh, styrofoam, sorry, blocks were about £5.50 each. So the total cost of this video is uh, about 25 quid, 26 quid, something like that. So uh, yeah, let's get started. Right, so these bits just slide straight off. Get them off first. You can run the knife down easier. Stanley knife. And just cut this away. Alright, if you do have these bits on top that you need to get off, the best way I've found to do it is just to literally slide the knife, the Stanley knife, along it like this. It takes a little bit of work to get it in there in the first place, but once you're in, you can just glide it along the silicon. And it should come out. Should just lift out now, really. There we go. Right, so we've got the tank cleaned and uh, in place, and uh, this has still got the uh, sealant on it where the glass was originally. That doesn't matter too much, I'm not going to try and scrape that off because I've got the covers and uh, they will actually hide that when it's, uh, when it's done. To clean it, uh, because it was an old fish tank, I did have to clean it pretty well. I had lime scale all over it, um, so I did actually use uh, some silicone bang to get that off. But um, you know, as it's a snake, it's not going to be the end of the world with chemicals. You know, it's not like a fish tank where you've got to be really careful. And I've washed it out insanely thoroughly. It took ages. I mean, it took a long time to clean this thing. But yeah, I mean, it's in place now and um, it's ready to get the scenery put in. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be trying to kind of build um, essentially this side. I want to be the hot side. Um, and I haven't decided whether I'm going to use a heat mat yet or a uh, ceramic bowl. I'm probably going to go for the ceramic bowl and I'm going to make that myself, um, apart from the bowl obviously, but I'm going to make everything else myself and I'll show you how I do that as well. Um, but yeah, I want to have this as the hot side, so I want to have um, a hide over here and I want to have a cool hide somewhere over that side, probably each hide in the corner. And I might put some sort of other cave um, in the centre somewhere, but not a proper hide. Um, just to add some interest to it, because it's quite a big tank, so I'll probably be able to fit three in. Um, we'll see how it goes. So what I'm going to do is, um, I've got this stuff, uh, Kingspan Therm, I'm not really sure exactly what it's made of, but it looked like it would do the job. Um, it's pretty much um, styrofoam, so a lot of other people that I've seen doing this use uh, pink styrofoam, and I think that probably is the best stuff to use, um, as that is what everyone's using. But they didn't have any, and uh, this stuff looked exactly the same. I've used pink styrofoam before, and this felt exactly the same. So, um, yeah, I'm going to use this. Obviously, the only drawback with this is it's got this uh, metallic sort of coating on it. So, I'm going to need to peel this off. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to do that now. Well, that took ages, but um, I got it all off, and uh, it's kind of got some, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, it's kind of got some rocky patterns on it already, which I kind of like. Um, but I've mapped out kind of like the rough area on this board. What I did is I just put it on and um, kind of drew a line along where the front of the tank was, kind of, you know, drew up the sides and drew along so I could kind of get a rough floor area. Um, I don't know how well the pencil shows up on the camera, but that's the line for the front of the tank. Uh, and then I've got my, cool, my uh, hot hide here and my cool hide here. So what I've done is I've just kind of like um, drawn in some rough lines here where I want to cut um, so that's obviously the size of the hide, but once I've chipped away and you know made some sort of rocky patterns in it, it will be a bit bigger. 
so you know you want to leave enough room for that. Um, so with this, I was just kind of playing about with where I want the water bowl to be. So I'm gonna have it. I decided coming out, um, and then I'm gonna kind of follow this line along here. Have a little rocky sort of outcrop here, maybe with the point here, and um, then it comes in and leads into the cool hide and that comes around here and finishes off there and the water bowl um, I did want to have it over that side but um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it about here maybe a bit more over this way and it's going to kind of come out from the front of the tank like this um, be that kind of shape and have a uh, sort of depression in it where I can put water that's the plan anyway and now it's time to cut it up so uh, I don't have a hot wire cutter because we're doing this on a budget but um, I do have a knife so I'm going to give that a go. And there we go. That's the uh, first section. So like I say, this is going to be the uh, in the corner. So. Uh, I'm not sure what I'll do with this, but yeah, that'll probably be sort of towards, that's the front of the tank, so I might chisel this down and kind of just build some little rock in the corner and paint this edge black, so it kind of leads up nicely, or brown, whichever. I paint the black at the back of the cage, um, I'll do the same colour. And uh, yeah, so the entrance to the hide, um, and the sort of shape of the inside, like I said, this will all be chiselled away as well, so it should um, kind of give me some nice uh, breathing room making you know, nice thick border around the edge. So that's probably something you want to do if you try this. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fit this bit in the tank and um, then cut off the next couple of bits and kind of piece them together and just see how it works. I'm just going to play it by ear really. So uh, get this put in now. Okay, so that's the uh, cool hide. And, uh, Stick this bit in as well. Now most people, um, in most of the cheap, these tutorials I've seen, would cut this whole back section out as one piece, but um, I think uh, if I cut them all out separately, then it will kind of give it a more rocky effect. But I am going to do uh, this whole piece, so I've already got the lines that I cut here and here. I'm going to do this whole piece um, as one solid bit, so it does line up along the back at the base, but the rest of it I'm probably just going to do blocks. So um, yeah, I'll get this bit cut out. So here's what it looks like with the uh, all those sections in place. So like I say, warm hide, um, sort of front entrance, um, and all this is like going to be chipped away. It will it will get thinner. Um, sort of got a main sort of area here um, where the drink the water bowl will probably be around here somewhere. So it won't be too close to the heat source. Um, got this little outcrop which I just thought would be a nice feature to have, but probably won't be too high. Um, and I want kind of this shelf coming up here, I think, um, to be quite high. Uh, I'm just going to, like I say, just kind of wing it and kind of see how it goes, um, build it up section by section and kind of see what looks good and then uh, stick it all together before I carve it. And yeah, cool hide over here, kind of leads in quite nicely. Um, and basically what the idea is, once I've piled up a couple more of these and I've kind of got like the uh, hide here, like a sort of dome, um, I'm going to still keep the top open. I'm going to take uh, one of the scrap pieces and um, just kind of make a slab out of it and kind of stick it on top. Um, and I think I'm going to angle cuts in the rock going all the way along like this. And um, so I think this one will kind of slant this way and on this side um, it will kind of slant this way. So it will kind of all be angular and hopefully the rocks will look awesome like that. And um, yeah, as I've done it in pieces it's easy to take in and take out. Um, but once I do it Properly, I'll stick it all together um, out of the tank, and uh, hopefully, it will all fit back in in place. <laughs> so that's the plan, anyway. All right, so I've done the second level now. I don't think I'll show you all the cutting out. It's a bit boring, but basically, I just got the pieces from underneath, stuck them on top of a new block of uh, styrofoam, traced around it, and then cut them a little bit shorter or whatever shape I wanted different. This end I cut slightly shorter, pretty much the same shape all the way around here, just brought it in a bit. Um, you may think this looks kind of high now, but um, I'm actually going to stick another layer on it and make it even higher, 
because when the substrate's in there, it's going to bring the ground level up to almost this bottom block, so that is not going to be tall enough for um, a big snake. So it's going to need to come up at least another one, maybe another one after that as well. Um, and then obviously, uh, yeah, just cut this back a bit, brought this back a little bit as well, and um, this one I've made a little bit wider, um, cut that back from the front, so that doesn't sit on the front anymore. Um, it's a little bit loose this bit, but it doesn't really matter because um, I'm going to be filling it all in with poly filler anyway. So uh, I'll just give you a close up quickly. So this is what we've got so far. And the main area where the water bowl will probably be around here somewhere. I have so haven't made that yet. And the cool hide, so that's it so far. And I think that's all for today, so I'll get back to you tomorrow when I continue. Okay, so uh, it's now the next day, and um, I've been doing a bit more this morning. Basically what I've done is I've added another two levels. Um, another piece just kind of sitting on top, um, and then this piece completes the top of the cave. Um, completely joined and still got a hole in the top so I can reach in and grab a snake. Um, and the same on the other side. Um, another piece the same, and then another joining piece. I think that depth should be good because like I said, the substrate will come up probably to the bottom of the where the first line is. So the cave entrance will probably be about that sort of size, which will probably be a good size, um, considering the type of snake I want to keep. Okay, so after a bit more work, this is what I've managed to come up with. We've got um, basically the rough structure completely finished now. So like I say, you hide here with the, with the lid on it, and uh, this whole slab just will slide off. That'll be the only removable bit. Got a couple of little overhangs to kind of keep it in place um, in case the snake pushes it up. Same on the other side, got the overhang here, slight overhang here. This is the piece that comes off. And um, yeah, I think it's looking pretty good. Um, I haven't started gluing yet, that'll be in the next video because this one's getting a bit long now. Um, but this, I have glued this together. Just the sort of water bar, made it kind of fairly big so you can kind of get in it a bit if you want. Um, yeah, just got a couple of shards of rock which I've kind of tried a bit carving on. But um, that will also be in uh, probably the next video. So yeah, um, it's going pretty well so far. And the reason I put these big slanted rocks here is because I decided what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the heat lamp hanging about here. Um, so this can be a basking area. And uh, it's going to heat the warm side as well as having this as the main basking area. And I didn't want it directly shining on the water because I didn't want it to evaporate and affect the humidity without me being able to control it. Okay, so this is the warm side. Um, kind of seeing the cave a bit there. And uh, yeah, that's the rock that's on top that is removable, this one. That just slides right off and there's a big hole there. I don't want to move it about too much at the moment because it will probably all fall apart. And uh, yeah, we've got the water bowl there with the slanted rocks and that's the basking area. As you can see, it's completely shielded from the heat source and uh, the rest of the basking area and rocky outcrop, which I've changed a little bit since the last clip. Um, and the entrance to the cool cave with the rocks on top. And uh, I think it's done a pretty good job of just looking like a pile of rocks without looking like I put a lid on it, especially. So um, yeah, like I say, the next the next stage really is uh, gluing it all together and um, using polyfiller to get in all these gaps because I don't want really a lot of light getting in there. And there's a few gaps there which light will be able to get in from the top and I want him to feel secure in there. So that will be done with uh, polyfiller and expanding foam. So uh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe if you found this uh, helpful and you want to see more and uh, like the video and um, please don't forget to comment as well and uh, let me know what you think. I'd like to hear your opinions on what I've done. Obviously if you think I've done anything slightly wrong or any suggestions on how to you know, improve it, then I am all ears. So uh, thanks for watching you guys and I'll catch you next time.